This video is brought to you by the good people who support me on Patreon. Um, I'll shut you out later. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One can say that... Okay. Fucking... Tu madre te quiere. No hace falta que llames la atención. Are you ever so fucking clueless? You have no idea. You 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 don't know. You just, you simply don't know. And neither do I. <laughs> it's fine, you know. We're learning together, okay? The right lies. Uh, so much for stating the obvious, right? <laughs> From the perspective of liberation, trying to understand the right, it's a very, very, very difficult endeavor. Like... What the fuck are they thinking? Fuck if I know. <laughs> right? I don't know. Do you? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> the fact that social issues are usually incredibly complex. There being forces and counter forces, you know, and all that shit. It, it doesn't make it any easier. It's really fucked up. One could try to describe uh, liberatory and reactionary politics with so much nuance and so many different angles that we could be here like four hours. <laughs> but I swear I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> well, at least not now, okay? No, not yet. Like one could say that the right wing of politics is more concerned with power itself, not as a means to get to an end, but as an end goal in itself. Hey, hola, George Orwell. Ah! I mean, you know, nobody's perfect, okay? But there's gotta be more to that. There's gotta be more to that. And, and let's try and figure it out. Like, one could say that they believe in an order of things and a series of hierarchies that are natural, in their opinion, whatever natural is. That it comes from the past and it's somehow inevitable and that's the way of things in period. So like that they justify that there's people that are better than others and therefore they deserve more. I mean, it's weird. It's what they say. Hard to, hard to buy. But then again, is it a pillar of their thought? Or is it just a strategy? Repeat after me. Fuck if I know. We could go on pondering and wondering for a long while because it's very difficult, you know, to tell from what they say and do what they are actually up to. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, okay? It's hard. Acorn. In fact, it's hard to tell if this is an accident or by design. But one thing we can say with certainty. They lie through their teeth. Ow. But that sucks. Nobody likes being lied to. Or, like how they can even work. If you don't know the truth from the lies. Or... Hold on a second. Right wing media. The right nice to the people. Like, they always do, right? They, they always do that. As of today, capitalist systems work around organizations dedicated to accumulating capital. Uh, you know, those that have those pesky billionaires as their visible heads, surrounded by endless PR campaigns and world fame and whatnot. We live in all that those absolute muppets can hold that much power. But we tend to overlook that it's not those individuals that do the deed, but the massive organizations they sit on that can absolutely work without them at their simulated helm. Capitan! 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 Capitan de qué? What the fuck, Capitan? Tú. Qué bueno, hostia. These massive organizations are filled to the brim with ruthless executives with no scruples and way too much leverage. Their job and other ambition is to make sure that their interests as corporation, as, as selfish as individuals, are protected in all fields of society. In this way, in a nutshell, those organizations control the private media worldwide. And this is how it works. Most private outlets depend on these big corporations 
in which you know they have members sitting on their board or they're a main source of income via advertising and whatnot or often both one thing right-wing narratives are good at is being good for business keeping things the way they are makes the money machine go brrrr. it's an old meme already isn't it fucking memes of course a liberatory ideology as of today is by necessity anti-capitalist. We need to question capitalism, otherwise what are we, what are we doing, right? <laughs> what are we doing? Well, uh, that's, a, that's a valid question, I guess. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? You know, the whole thing about the people seizing the means of production, so we start like new, better, more ethical ways, uh, lower consumption, so we don't actually destroy the planet or the environment we live in and so on. Well, well that's bad for business. <laughs> Oh fuck are we not fucked. Corporate powers are built around right-wing values. They're hierarchical, they're abusive, they're based on, you know, power and uh, extraction. And of course, their media needs to reflect those values. They indoctrinate people into consumerist values, such as obedience, uh, anger at the dispossessed, um, detachment, uh, love for military institutions or militarized police, or police <laughs> for that matter, <laughs> and an absolute worship for the powerful ghouls on top, which is, you know, come to think about it, <laughs> unbelievable, but it, it is the way it is. Go on, lick that boot, lick it, yes, lick the boot, lick it, <laughs> oh, private media! <laughs> In this way, all private media outlets and, you know, some public media outlets too are basically right-wing. Because, you know, that's, those are the values that are out there, and no matter what they try, even when they try, which is not many cases, but I mean, I guess somebody must have tried. <laughs> No, <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. And they vary in degrees, like sometimes it's just, uh, you know, some capitalist indoctrination seeping through the scripts or whatever, to absolute outlandish right-wing propaganda that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I most of the time don't believe it. Like, how can they get that far and not tell, but, you know the fuck I know. Of course, as nothing in politics is simple. Uh, there are many nuances to this and various degrees and whatnot, but you know, given that capitalism is bringing about the end of the world as we know it and we need to stop it, let's set the bar there, okay? <laughs> capitalism bad. <laughs> Again. <laughs> The thing is, no matter how subtle or blatant it is, uh, most of the media we consume is, at some degree, right-wing. That's uh, the whole point. You know, from the effective capitalist realism of advertising to the absurd uh, realm of political commentary. Everything is tinted by capitalist indoctrination. And you know, these are more or less easy-ish to see through the plot but there's another piece of media that is really concerning which is you know you know the news media that allure of objectivity that they have and uh, it's not so objective oh, surprise. you know tv news shows or digital uh, newspapers or any news source whether it's you know social networks and whatnot uh, they're surprisingly lying through their teeth. Holy crap, do they lie! From horror stories of migrants taking your job, trans people taking your bathroom, poor people taking your space and being ugly and frightening. They depict us as others. They give fascists the first step to start punishing us. The false depictions of protests being violent. Like, what the fuck? Protests being violent? What, what, where's the violence here?
you ask me. But yeah, they keep saying our protests are violent. And they spin a lot of absurd narratives of, you know, the powers that be being right. But they ignore our social issues. Like, what the fuck? They ignore us. They ignore us. But, you know, we're evil for them. In the mainstream media in general, and in the news in particular, uh, the contents are curated in a way that you get distracted with, you know, partisan politics instead of, you know, grassroots politics. And, you know, you get distracted with other types of things that so you don't think in the problems that really affect your society. But you're thinking about this or that character, this or that personality, this or that brand. You're not thinking about the people. You're thinking about the brands. You're thinking about the individuals, the characters in a story, in a narrative, not giving you straightforward news, whatever that is, but, you know. A bullshit story. In this way, reality is seen through a lens of right-wing ideology. Of course, advertising and lifestyle shows offer us a ton of right-wing lies and propaganda. Like, you know, the typical myth of, you know, having the spouse, the house, uh, the lawn, the children, the pets, the vehicle. You know, you know where I'm going. You may ask yourself, how did I get here? The two days go by, na 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 lifetime. Not to mention concepts like copaganda, <laughs> which, wow, <laughs> outlandish as it is, there are a lot of good videos about it, actually. Or the, 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 the outright participation of the army, and, like, openly, uh, paying and for for movies Hollywood movies and, and TV movies and TV shows to be like advertising for their institutions saying yeah, look at that look at that tank it's so cool the airplane and the gun sets pew 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 but I guess that's another story so yes from covertly right-wing media to uh, absolutely out there and explicit right-wing media of those degrees in between all of them lie <laughs> all of them <laughs> so bullshit <laughs> I mean they mix some truth with lies but you know you get my drift they lie to incite the fear of others of those of us who chose not to walk the, the narrow path they set for us you know they make us into the other the, not the subject but the object the other and so in this way you know it's easy for other people who are inside the narrow path that i said before to just you know not like us uh, to absolutely hate us like they just need a little push uh, after the indoctrination it's easy peasy and it works for the way things are if they start seeing us as you know regular people who just want to live a peaceful life and you know mind their own business <laughs> you know and be okay with us that would make other people question their lifestyles and their choices in life and that would be very dangerous for them <laughs> so the mainstream capitalist media um, TV uh, digital newspapers regular newspapers social networks and so on and so on like a shopping cart they're skewed to the right so we behave as we should obedient consumers obedient accomplices of a system of exploitation that leaves more and more people in their margins out to starve and die if we must but that's not all nice how they work um, uh, there's the truth that I well, they lie a lot and they get away with it, e even when they get caught. The right-wing lie works because it's not supposed to state facts or reflect a reality. It seeks to build a narrative. This is something that people have been talking about since the early 2000s that I can recall, like when people were talking about the post-truth era and whatnot. But it's actually been practiced since way earlier. In a way, lies operate in many levels. 
They create a narrative that taps into the emotions of their captive audiences. And also they prevent their narratives from being countered because there's no trust left as so many actors have lied from so many different vectors that it's impossible to pin down when and where and who exactly is to be trusted. Just trust the narrative. Just trust your gut. Just trust your feelings. Of course, if you dig a little, you can tell that many of these actors, if not to say most, uh, come from more or less the same sources and they do the same tactics all the time. But the general public doesn't dig, you know? People want to live their lives. People want to be left alone. And it's, of course, of course it's going to be like that. Of course. You know, we're, we're all too tired. We're all too stressed. We're all so spent to just invest a little time in these, you know, simple investigations. So, yeah, in this way, lies can operate without any meaningful opposition. They create a narrative and an ambient where there's no trust, where there's no way to check if something is true or not. They manipulate emotions. They create environments without trust, without meaning without any certainty that people can hold on to. If nobody can be trusted, if everything is relative and everything is a lie, then stories of truth don't matter. Only your feelings matter. And right-wing ideology is all about manipulating people's feelings to favor the powerful by oppressing the powerless. In the case of social networks, this premise works even better because in the time that it takes to dismantle a lie, there are thousands and thousands upon thousands of users that have already seen it uncritically. Because all of these uncritical users are in the majority. You know, none of us have been given, in general, you know, the tools to have a decent media literacy. Of course, if we need to talk about the algorithms that operate social media, we would have to go back to what I just said before about the shopping cart skewed to the right and whatnot. Yeah, you get my drift. A lie plants a seed that doesn't go away when people uncover it. Even though the truth, or whatever we can call the truth at the time with the evidence that we got, has more material consequences in the world, given the systems of rewards and the imbalances of power that exist in our societies, a lie is going to yield bigger and more immediate results. That is for those interested in the effects of that lie, because those affected are going to suffer, as we always do. Building trust, the hard way of winning. Uh, yeah, this is not easy, but... Of course, when lies are the predominant weapon, or the weapon of choice, of the ideological side of the game, it is tempting for us seeking liberation to use those powerful tools for our cause. Well, don't. <laughs> but I'm gonna explain it, okay? We and our pesky uh, need to eradicate hunger and to help people in need, you know, to have a social equality and... <laughs> So pesky. I use the word pesky a couple of times already. You know what I mean. Those outlandish goals of us. The sheer fucking hubris. Sheer fucking hubris. <laughs> yeah, that one. No, but really, it can be as tempting as it is counterproductive. When we contribute more and more to this environment of post-truth, of mistrust, people get more isolated, more scared of each other, or of being ridiculed online for clicks. Granted, it will give us some short-term benefits, like a quick dunk on this or that major right-wing figure, or a glimmer of hope for this or that movement, but as much as right-wingers get away with it, our liberation movements suffer for the lack of trust and authenticity, we need to build the lasting bonds of a new world free of exploitation and damage. So instead of my opinion, I may be wrong, I'm often wrong, but in my opinion, we should be building trust in a world of lies. That means building relations over time. Talking the talk, yes, but walking the walk. Making friendships, connections, trying, failing, learning, trying again. It's a lot of work, isn't it? It sucks, but this slower and more labor-intensive process creates a more solid bonds, say, preformative politics, a way of creating the relations of that new world we want to see sprout from the ashes of the old one. 
But again, doing all this in a world of lies, mistrust, psyops, agents like that good old Matrix allegory when everyone and anyone can become an agent Smith. <laughs> uh, that was that's really hard. But but the the, the media criticism piece that uh, Sophie and and Sarah made about the Matrix sequels, you, know, you should check it out. You have already. You probably have. It's it is what it is. But you should check it out. I leave another link. Another link. More homework. Javier, por Dios. The right wing has corporations, social media, superstructures, and swaths of money to astroturf their supremacy. All we have is people and. Not as many as we should. Bring your friends, uh, keep an eye on them, you know, the Agent Smith thing, but, you know, people make mistakes as well, you know, <laughs> take it, you know. But wait a minute, people is all we need. People, we make things happen. We build the world. We build the old one and we can easily build the new one. Slow but steady, that's the pace of us. The people, the pros, the peasants, that business executives and, and uh, ugly economists call us in uh, their secret, not so secret, microeconomic reports. We, the peasants, they don't need us, but we do need each other. The simple working class that Karl Marx described over 200 years ago. Yo, Karl. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Doing makes things happen. Commanding is weak. It's just words. Can we revert it? Surely, steadily, don't be in a hurry. I mean, we're kind of out of time because of the climate disaster, but there's no other way of doing things correctly. There's no mm, magic bullet. There is no one single recipe. We all need to try different angles and make it happen in our own way one step at a time, one conquest at a time. There is no such thing as the one moment where everything turns overnight. That's ridiculous. So it won't be easy, but it's already happening. Can we build trust? Yes, but as I said before, not overnight. It takes work, it takes time, it takes integrity. The patience that we don't always have and the energy that gets drained from us by the capitalist class at our jobs or studying or whatever we do, you know, to make a living. Every weekday, every commercial, every fake news article, that energy gets drained away from us. But yes, we can do it. Yes, we can, but not this time around, not as an empty significant, but as an actual thing that we can do collectively together. A firm purpose that we can do what no corporation no politician or no bourgeois organization can do for us. We can do it ourselves, together. <sighs> so, my bet is always on trust. I don't think it's time for sophistry and mistrust between, you know, the people who are seeking to theoretically liberate ourselves from an obviously oppressive system. Even more so when there's an impending collapse, you know, brought about by the greed of the capitalist and the scarcity of resources, of wanting infinite growth in a finite planet. I don't, I don't think it's time for, for any sophistry and bullshit. I strongly think it's time for an ironic solidarity, mutual aid, mutual support, and as much truth as we can bring to the table. Otherwise, I don't think we'll make it. I just, just don't. So, uh, are you with us? I hope so. And if you're an agent, please go, go take a walk. <laughs> There's plenty of space, just, just leave us be, okay? It's time to behave like grown-ups and you have nothing to do here, agent, so, you know, you know the, you know the drill, you know, you know where the door is, I don't have to show you. It's time for the adults uh, in the room, as the Varoufakis book says, you know, take the stage and make things happen. Building better, non-toxic relations that make us more whole, less cared, less empty. The right lies, so we owe each other honesty, at the very fucking least. Please.
So yes, it's that part of the video where I really appreciate all the good people who support me on Patreon and on Kofi Fofi um, and, and you know support me in general. Thank you so much for for your help. Um, I want to thank especially uh, Catherine Stenson. You've always been there. So have you, Neil Surio? I want to thank you, Robert Lambert, who I know also personally. Uh, I want to thank Stefan Bittner. You've always been there as well, so I appreciate it, really. Uh, I want to thank Darren Lay, uh, Il Sinistero, uh, Chris Lack, Matt Blender, Michele Schmidt, uh, Nils Abilgard, uh, Serna Gallagher, Simona Ferlini, The Kinky Beast, The Milk Toast Fool, Randy Randerson, of course, and The Serfs. Thank you so much. If you want to support me on Patreon, um, there's got to be a link there somewhere. And I uh, appreciate all the good help, really. Uh, there's also, you know, the Kofi Fee, Kofi Fee, Kofi Fee, and uh, the other stuff that I've been working recently with uh, Catherine for, you know, making some nice uh, thumbnails and. You know, anything that helps, helps. I uh, appreciate, appreciate you all, good people. Thank you so much. Have a good one. See you in the next video, I guess. Smooches. <laughs> well, there I say smooches. <laughs>